What's up guys, it's Larko and today we've got Season 7 Turning Point Gameplay Trailer for Battlefield 2042. Now, before we do get into today's video, I do have to clarify some stuff, so I haven't actually watched this yet, it's currently 9pm at night. I have seen some stuff come up on my Twitter notifications and some stuff people have been saying in the Discord about the leaks being correct, and yeah, I, I kind of know what is coming with this season and I know I'm going to be disappointed, so feel free to leave a comment down below on your thoughts and if you agree with me, but there's some, there are some things I'm going to say that you just can't disagree with. It's just facts. I'm going to give you a completely honest review of this as there's a lot of creators, especially big ones and ones that are in the EA Creator Network, that are just absolutely sucking this off and they're not criticizing it or being truthful to the 2042 community at all. But let's get into it. And they always do good trailers as well for Battlefield 2042. They just, it's a shame they don't reflect on the gameplay. Okay, this is Sundance's new skin. The skins do look nice, I'll give them that. Chile, Atacama Desert. I think Atacama Desert is where um, Arica Harbor is based. I could be wrong, but yeah, some of these buildings I've seen about this, it literally looks like it's been copy and pasted from Arica Harbor. All right, so that there, I'm pretty sure that is the new SMG. The SCZ, I think it's called. It does sound nice. I'll give that. That, I'm pretty sure that's the new AR, the AK5C. Again, it looks nice, but we've got some bad news coming for these new weapons. That's the new M5A3 skin as well there. It looks very nice, but I bet that's beyond a paid paywall. No, I'm not talking about the battle pass either. Here you go, the new RPG. It's a tracking one as well, isn't it? Yeah, you can guide it. It seems lethal. I wonder if this is going to be more powerful as well than Lizard's Rocket. Right, two new maps, right? Okay, this is where the first leak comes in. These are not two new maps, right? This is one new map. Because Stadium has been confirmed and it is a rework, okay? It is not a new map and it's scummy for dice to market it this way. It does look nice. I'll give him that. But yeah, literally, there you go. There's Hourglass in the background. Literally Hourglass. There it is, the big stadium. Yeah, I, I hate the way they're marketing this as a new map. It's not. Haven, okay, so that's the name of a new map based in Chile. See, this here, this literally looks like it's been copy and pasted from Arica Harbor. And it's still got this really clean aspect to it. It doesn't look anywhere as gritty as the pictures we had on Instagram from DICE. Like, okay, right, you've got some rubbish and some clothes there. But look, that vehicle's just sat there looking pristine. You've got a lorry that's just turned to the left and a beat up van there. But the buildings and everything, it just look how pristine this rooftop looks. There's a few paint scratches on the building to show wear and tear, but God, everything just looks pristine yeah yeah i, I don't know man I, I do not like how this is looking in the asset department of copy and pasting we get the best of the battle pass so new pond hawk skin there's the m5a3 yeah tier 7 i think that said liz level 98 don't really care for them arctic looking camos okay so there's the ak5c in action it does look nice but yeah tier 19 i'm gonna be talking about these tiers at the end because they are plagues yeah tier 7 and then tier 37 new wildcat skin Oh, this is Super 500 skin. I've seen as well, this looks a bit like the, uh, what event was it we had? We, there was a camo for the AK. It kind of looks like the VHX uh, skin that we got through the exclusive Ultimate Edition version of the Battle Pass last season. The skins do look nice, I'll give them that. But I can guarantee you it is not going to look like a war zone like this. It, uh, they make the trailers look so nice, but God, it is not going to look like this when you're playing. at the end all right oh that's for new lmg i can't remember what it's called i'm sure it's going to say at the end but yeah this is for new lmg so we're getting free weapons oh god and there's the bomber people were talking about 
and it can go invisible. But I'm curious to see, because it's a bomber, and obviously it drops bombs here, I wonder if it's going to be anywhere near as powerful as the Huron, or if it's going to be more powerful. Because the fact that these can go invisible, I assume you're not going to be able to lock onto them. So you ain't going to be able to see them. And if they're more powerful than the Huron bombs, that's going to be ridiculous. I just hope it's easy for helis and other jets to take him out. Otherwise, that's going to be an insane new toxic meta. I've just checked uh, Battlefield Bulletin and I can confirm that the XFAD, a new vehicle, the DFR Strife, a new LMG, a new weapon, and Stadium, the new map, but it's a rework, and not actually coming out in Season 7 at the start. We've got to wait. So we're probably going to have to wait till mid season, you know, however long DICE are going to drag it out until we get an extra weapon, an extra vehicle. And an extra map. And apparently as well, the XFAD will only be dropping EMP bombs. Uh, no radar missiles or anything. But if there's a bomb, surely it's still going to kill people. Unless it's purely just EMP to disable specialist gadgets and um, vehicle weapons and stuff. I don't know. So yeah, that's the stealth bomber there. The XFAD for Draga or Draga, however you want to pronounce it. That's tier 37, I think it said. You got what looks like a that could be the AK 5C there, and that could be an AK 24. But if it's a new weapon, I assume this one here is actually the AK 5C, and that's a the AK 24. I'm not sure what the law and ordinance is. That looks a little bit like an AC 42, and then System Purge, which is the Super 500. The, these skins are nice. The Zane Antivirus is one that I straight away had my eye on. The Sundance one is pretty cool as well, and then you got the Liz one too. Exclusive cosmetics. So these are going to be paid for, like in season six we had with a VHX skin and then McKay. So yeah, there's a skin for Irish, a weapon skin, bronze retribution for the M5A3. I thought they would have done it for the AK or the um, SCZ. Yeah, Pontalk skin. Oh god, I'm going to end up buying this pass just for the Pontalk skin. Along with 20 tier skips. So now when I mentioned earlier about the tier skips, this is all going to come into play. So 20 tier skips. The SCZ is at tier 7 and then the AK5C is tier 19. Now total FPS confirmed on Reddit or it might have been Twitter. I think it was Reddit. About two, two and a half months ago that they do purposely overpower and overtune the battle pass weapons because it's easier to nerf them. And they also said as well that they want everyone to have a fair chance of using the weapons when they're in their current state but that is not how nerfing weapons work that's how a toxic meta grows very quickly into the game and what's more annoying as well is that even though these weapons we know are going to be overpowered if you buy the ultimate pack it is pay to win so you can actually pay to have the most overpowered weapons in the game it could be different this time but more than likely dice are going to go down their normal route like we had with the rm68 the vhx the g4282 yeah it's just i don't know it's, it's it leaves such a sour taste in my mouth that these are going to be paid to win and it didn't say what tier the DFR strife is it might might be on Twitter now I'm not entirely sure but yeah these three weapons are probably going to be pretty nuts at launch so if you want to pay to win then just buy the armor pack it's pretty much going to happen we'll see it on the first day it's released when people are sweating them out what is very annoying about this and instantly irritated me when I got told that there are bigger creators, much larger creators, in fact, that are part of the EA Creator Network, some that are, some that aren't, and they have been singing this season's praise. They haven't criticised it at all. They've basically just said, without mentioning names, there's one very specific one in mind. He was saying there's two new maps. He, he didn't clarify that one is clearly a rework when it is, in a way DICE have labelled it. It's just scummy and marketed it. People that won't say anything and won't be honest to the people watching the videos especially when they have a much bigger following and I get that these people want to strive for positivity on their channel that just doesn't work when we are owed more as a community and the biggest downfall to this season and the thing that irritates me the most is the fact that this is terrible for the amount of time we waited for this season six months um or nearly six months it was like 23 or 24 weeks i think we've been waiting for this we're getting three new weapons a vehicle and a gadget right essentially that is it along with one new map and one rework this is what we were getting in season one two three and four on top of a new specialist too so the fact that we are waiting literally double the amount of time for one season when when this game released we would have already done season one and two and we would have had six weapons here two maybe three gadgets i'm not sure two vehicles like the huron and the hannah 
understandable if you want to class them as different vehicles. That was two vehicles in season one, and you'd also get a specialist along with a new map and a rework of an original 2042 map. Seeing all these creators and all these people on socials celebrating DICE, saying they're giving us what we want, they're not. The amount of deception that is played on season seven is unbelievable, and not enough people are talking about it. I know that a lot of people are just happy we're getting more content for the game, especially people that have only started playing since season six, but I've been playing since the very start and it is very painful to watch this happen. People should be criticizing DICE for this and holding them accountable for their actions. And don't get me wrong, I'm glad we're getting new content too, but it's not enough. We should we should get double this. I mean, in previous seasons as well, we were also getting vault weapons. I think the only season we did on was season six. I can't remember the exact numbers, but yeah, we'd have like three new weapons, a new gadget, a new vehicle in like season one, two, three, and four, along with a new specialist, a new map, rework of a map. And then we would also have like, I don't know, two, three, maybe four vault weapons that come over from Paul and maybe they're keeping it a secret and they're going to add it in mid-season but if you're going to do that just be honest Dice they're trying to play like this edgy card of keeping quiet and not saying anything publicly but that's that's not good enough we need more in this game we still need a server browser for all-out warfare which I doubt is going to come in season 7 but it might because I personally haven't played a map like Reclaimed since season 5 because when you play 64 player conquest you are going to get every single map in the game and the chance of you getting Reclaimed is undeniably slim and trust me i'm i'm not doing that especially when you try to find a game it gives you a map so you cancel it you try searching again it'll just give you that map over and over and over and over again if we had a server browser for all out warfare this wouldn't be a problem the map rotations as well soon need to be fixed the mouse input needs to be fixed the cav brawler in my opinion needs a substantial nerf i don't know how the hell it hasn't already it's just a lot of irritating things this season and the fact that people don't speak up about it and especially these bigger creators that have a voice that Dice devs are probably going to listen to. They just don't say nothing. They just keep quiet and they post positivity. But you need to be able to criticize. You can be positive and still criticize the game. And that's, that's what annoys me so much. I don't understand how people are still sucking off dice so much, saying thank you, thank you for all this content. When it's not, we're not getting. Oh, it's it's so underwhelming what we're getting for the amount of time we've been waiting. We should be getting double this. So to all of them idiots on any social platform like Reddit or Twitter or Instagram that is giving dice praise for this, you are what is wrong with the community. It's so annoying. But yeah, this this would be my rant. Um, I'm not excited for this. I'll be honest. I'm not excited for this season at all. I'm glad we get new content, but I'm not buzzing or anything like I normally would be. I still think we're going to have a season eight as well. They're going to do, obviously the year one was four seasons. Year two is going to be four seasons. It makes sense, but, but I wouldn't put it past dice to not do that. Feel free to leave a comment if you agree with anything I've said. I know for a fact there's going to be some people that are upset, but it's just because they can't see the clear vision of what dice has done here with this season and the way they've promoted and marketed it it's absolutely disgusting i'll be honest i mean what companies like embark pushing out a new season for the finals right the second season season one felt a bit more like a beta but season two is nuts for the amount of content they're adding absolutely unbelievable and season one only lasted like nearly three months and it's a free-to-play game and they got a small team it feels like 2042 has a skeleton crew working on it and it has done for the last like eight nine months if you enjoyed today's video though please do feel free to leave a comment down below leave a like and make sure to subscribe